Hey you, this is Jasim from CodeBand and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to implement the single sign-on feature, otherwise called a social authentication in Django. So we'll only be just using a single provider, but instead we'll be using a couple of different providers like Facebook, GitHub, and Google. Now, there are a couple of packages out there to implement this feature of Django, but we'll be using one of the most popular package called as Django All Out. Now, there is an alternative package called as Python Social Auth, which is also a very good package. And, you know, there is some use case when uh, you have to use which one. So I'll talk about that thing at the end of this video. Now, before we actually move on to the coding part, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon here to it. So, yeah, with that, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so this is what we are getting at the end of this tutorial. So here is a very uh, clean looking login page. Now, this is not as great when in terms of uh, styling, but the functionality is very intact. You can see the same with Google, Facebook and GitHub. OK, so, uh, you know, if we if the user is not having any account with these three providers and he can actually create, he can actually sign up for an account and then he can sign in. OK, that's also possible now uh, let me quickly show you uh, how this works so let me sign with google okay and then um, yeah it, it, it is saying like uh, sign in continue to django so yeah uh, this is the app name that we provide now we'll talk about all these steps how, how do we register application in, in a moment but uh, for the time being i'll just quickly log in with my account And what do you know you can see that it says successfully signed in as jasim now here what happened is that i am just creating i have not created i have not logged in before with this particular account so what happens is that what happened is that it automatically creates or created an account for me with the username and the you know the first name last name everything coming from google okay the email all the things are coming from google and automatically created an account for me and then it logged me in okay so you can see now we are successfully signed in now if you go into the settings panel here you can see that uh, you know to which third party accounts to which social accounts is this account connected with so you can see now i'm just connected with google now i can actually add a third party account so for example if i sign with github if i click on that then you can see that the social account has, has has been connected now this is because i'm already logged into github that's why it is not showing me that username and password prompt i'm already logged in so that's why it automatically connected me this account so now we have two different so this particular jasim i mean the username uh, Jasim, this account had two connections, two social connections. It is connected with GitHub. It is also connected with Google. Okay, perfect. Now we can remove either of this from here as well. Okay. Now with this being said, let me actually log in with GitHub now uh, because I have added that GitHub from here, not from not by logging in. So if I sign out and sign with GitHub, you can see it will be the same account that uh, we actually created before. The username is again Jasim, and those two things are there. So it works perfectly fine. Now uh, let me also try out the uh, Facebook. So let me continue with Facebook over here, and then yeah, it, it actually shows me. Uh, the login to Facebook the prompt so if I were to actually give my account details right here and log in and uh, you can see that after logging in uh, we uh, usually we, you know if we see a message called you're you are about to use a Facebook account to log into log loss as a final step please complete the form now this is because the email that you're getting from Facebook is not verified meaning in Facebook you can create an account with either a username or a phone number or an email address so the email address you get from Facebook is not verified it might not come so all those things are there so you have to manually add an email address plus a password I mean a username not a password actually you don't need actually a password okay so for that you know you, you can just add some dummy email for example and then maybe a password um, 
just like that. So if I sign up with that account, you can see a confirmation email sent to Jasim, you know, that, that email address. Now this is not mandatory. I mean, this is just a additional feature of Django OLOD. The only thing we are about to bother is this one, successfully signed in as FAB. Okay, perfect. If I go into settings, you can see that this uh, account is being connected with the Facebook account of mine. Okay, so if I were to sign out and then continue with Facebook, now this time it'll automatically logs me in you can see that I just have to enter the password and then if I done that if I've done that then it'll automatically success you know says that it successfully signed in as FAB that's working perfectly fine so you have some additional features of Django all old known as you know you can change email you can you know make primary stuff and all those things you can add emails you know I'm not gonna you know uh, you know spend a lot of time on that because they are just additional features uh, the only thing we are interested in is this um, uh, sign with Google and stuff like that okay so with this being said uh, let's actually jump right into the code base and let's see how this actually works all right guys so we are back in VS code now I have just created a new Django project known as SSO and I've done nothing else just the plain project here and I have configured the virtual environment and activated it now the first thing we have to do is we have to install a package known as Django OLOD which I have mentioned earlier so you can uh, you know just go to th this link which will be provided in the description section just go to that and then uh, you can see in the left side panel you can see installation okay so there is some sort of procedure for that so just uh, you know follow along with me so first thing pip install so I'll just copy that We'll paste that in right there okay so meanwhile I'll just close the other uh, my other Django application which uh, which is the test version so th this is successfully installed and then I have to you know first of all yeah settings.py please note that Django.contrib.site is present in install lab so just copy that Django.contrib.site and come back to here in the settings.py in the install app section underneath the static files just add in that okay that's it now the second thing templates yeah you have to configure this you know context processor just copy this line of code from here and then just paste that the template section beneath this messages just paste that in and boom we're done with it and then we have the authentication backends just copy that and paste you know the authentication backend it's used to actually log in you know to give you that login functionality and it has already said that in the comment section right here so just just uh, you know copy that stuff this is the default one the first one this is the Django all old one okay and then we have the installed app section we have yeah all these three different things just copy that three things just go on here and then at the very top just add in you know in the installed app section and actually name that codes there so just align these things and now you have these all these three things okay all of, all of the account and all of the social account with that the next thing we have to do is yeah we have to you know these are all the providers that Django all all support so we have a ton of different providers here we just need Google Facebook and github so we can see Google from here Let's copy that and just paste that over there uh, it works now similarly you can just duplicate this stuff to you know just change providers dot github and providers dot facebook just like that okay this is it so we do have these three providers now we are just sticking with these three things you can have absolutely you know look into other providers such as you know twitter or maybe uh big bucket a lot of other steps okay so yeah with that being said uh, back into the documentation section yeah we need to set the url so these are the urls um, you know uh, which is responsible for logging in and the entire authentication flow just copy that line of code from there and add it into your URL patterns right beneath the admin panel just add in that and you have to you know import the include as well so just like that we have done and now we can see post installation we have a couple of different stuff so yeah we just need to migrate and boom we migrated and then we have yeah we need to add a site in the in our Django admin panel then we have to add our you know authentication uh, the actual keys and all so yeah let's actually create a new uh, super user so manage.py create super user 
um, just like that and I'll stick with uh, the default ones to make it very simple to log in so yeah I'll bypass the validation boom we got it now we have the run server right there so let me quickly go into that now uh, one important thing that you have to do is we have to change our 127 uh, 0 .0 0 0.0.0.1 to localhost okay so for that now uh, the reason why I changed that is because you'll, you'll get to know that once we actually start to implement the social authentication so I'll tell you that uh, in a second uh, so for that in order to change that we have to uh, make allowed host the localhost to be in the allowed host section that's it okay and then we can just go on to the 127 so instead of lock uh, yeah instead of 127 you can go into localhost port 8000 slash admin okay if we just go into admin um then you can see site matching query does not exist maybe yeah that's because um we might have forgotten something in the package itself okay so yeah at the very bottom you can see there is something called a site id is equal to one okay we just need to provide that we just forgot to do that okay so at the very bottom just say side id is equal to one and if i were to go into the login again yeah boom it works so i'll quickly log in and then you can see a couple of different things like social accounts and the account section which is the default things that the old django old package provides now here in the first thing we have to do is we have to edit the sites okay now this is the default one that django provides why we actually you know do that uh, site configuration so we just need to change this to uh, you know in the development we have to change it to localhost port 8000 then the display name let's stick with localhost and boom it works okay and then we have to actually start to configure each of the application so uh, which means first of all we'll go with google then we'll go with facebook and then we'll go with github okay so in the documentation in the provider section you can see the provider section uh, we do have you know all those uh, documentation so we just search for google so control f and what's this yeah you know it happens uh, something like you know i don't know what that mean so yeah if you search google then you can see that google is there and then the first thing you have to do is you have to register your website or your web application with google so that google you know uh, will think like you are a legit customer you know other users can uh, log into your account on your behalf okay so you have to register your application so for that you have to go into the developer console just you know open this in a new tab so you can see uh, it's being loaded and yeah it's saying google cloud platform and then the first thing you have to do is you have to um, you know first of all create now let me quickly quickly change my yeah uh, yeah yeah this is the correct account okay fine let me uh, first the first thing you have to do is you have to create a new project so just click on this new project right there and then uh, maybe I'll stick with Django or, or okay Django or okay you know you can of course choose your project name whatever it be just click on create and then yeah it is saying create project Django or Django or, or it is taking a bit of time there and once it's done it'll you know yeah you can select the project just click on select project and it will just select the project now you can see the the uh, name change right here okay so with that now what you have to do is you can click on all auth content screen just this option okay and you have to provide you know certain details to google about your project itself okay so the first thing you should type when you read all this stuff it will be external and then just click on create and then the app information the app name uh, maybe we'll call this django you know you can see on the right hand side these things will be shown to the user so django or auth um, app for the time being and then I'll just get rid of this here typo then I'll have the user support email to be the default one you can upload an app logo if you have one then the app domain for the time being you'll have the local host port 8000 and uh, with the HTTP protocol right there okay then privacy policy we don't have one but we'll mock one we'll just copy that and we'll just say privacy then the same goes with the service i'll just you know create a demo one and the authorized domains we don't have a domain uh, just yet so we don't have to you know 
do anything there and this email address you know we can if you have one we can provide the developer contact information I'll stick with D41 click save and continue and then the next step is scopes okay so what is scope scope is nothing but the things that we receive after the user signs into the account so uh, things like the first name last name the profile information the email address all those things we need from the user right so we can explicitly specify what all scopes we have you know we need right here but we'll you know do that in in our code base itself so that so that we can we don't have to you know manually you know restrict or you know do something here so we can just click on save and continue and then we need to add some test users since we are testing our application we have not yet published so we need to add a couple of different email addresses so that only those email addresses can be used to authenticate into your application okay so I'll click on add users and I'll just add a couple of users uh, a couple of email addresses now um, you know these have to be your gmail addresses so or otherwise you know your google business accounts whatever it be so let me quickly you know do a couple of different accounts right there and click on add and then uh, yeah it automatically adds those things okay perfect now if i click save and continue last thing is summary just read through all those things and then we can go back to the dashboard now with this being set up this is in testing now if you got all things like domain name you have in production you're in production they can publish your app okay this might require additional verification from google now with this being said um, you can just go into credentials right here so in the credential section you need to create some secret ids and all okay so just click on create credentials the second one or auth client id just click on that and then it asks about application type it's web application now the name is up to you you can just choose your app name something like that then this is very important the authorized javascript origin which is nothing but the uh, domain name of your application so uh, i'll quickly provide that http localhost for a thousand it's like that and the authorized redirect URI now the redirect URI is nothing but you know when the user clicks the sign with Google button and then he goes into the authentication flow so he'll go into google.com and he'll just sign in with his account and then to where Google shall redirect your you know that user that's what this is so this is nothing but a URL in your application so in our case you know since Django all odd is you know making all those things uh, by default we can just fill in as it is said like here you can just fill in this URL right there okay just fill in that and instead of this 127 that stuff you can just add a local host just like that and it works okay just click on create and this will do the trick okay all client created now you get a couple of different things you you get a client id you get a client secret okay just copy in the client id from there and for the time being just paste that in your settings okay just comment it out in your settings also the uh, client secret just copy that and just paste it over here just comment it out and then click on OK and uh, this these two things the client ID and client secret is required and you need to you know add that in your Django application very soon we'll do that very soon now this is all about the Google part we have successfully created all those things we have registered application we have created the credentials everything is set and now you know we have to yeah configure Django okay so for that we have to yeah go into the admin panel so if I go into here if I create my account it says yeah CSR token failure is automatically logged in now you have to go into social applications right at the bottom okay and you have to create a new social application so the provider here is Google name maybe you can stick with you know that that's not uh, the essential and then client ID is what we have copied in the comment section so just copy all the stuff from there and um, you know in your admin panel just paste that in and the same goes with the secret copy that and then the secret right here the key you don't have to actually have the key the sites just double click on localhost port 8000 and it is under the chosen sites just click on save okay and it is there it works okay and then um, the next thing if we look into the documentation yeah optionally you can specify the scope okay so you can just you know copy this guy from here 
and then go into your settings and below you can add this one social account providers Google the scope is what you receive from the user so you need the profile the public profile plus the email and then all params you don't have to bother about that it's somewhere related to the token the access token or fresh token you know don't bother about that just yet and then with this being said if we actually yeah go into the URL we'll be successfully seeing that uh, you know seeing the uh, sign with Google maybe you know if we uh, let me go into um, uh, maybe yeah uh, this one localhost uh, port 8000 slash accounts slash login so this is the default URL you know you, you might have already seen that now yeah it's getting redirected to profile that's because we have already logged in in the admin panel so log out then if we go into you know I'm sorry if we go into login then we can see that no facebook app configured please add a social app using django admin yeah now this is because we haven't configured facebook just yet but we have those two things in here okay so just quickly comment that out and then let me refresh this one then you'll get to know that yeah we have the default uh, you know django all or template uh, responsible for uh, you know logging in a user now this is you know looking ugly because there's no styles but we'll make that to the one that we, we have showed you uh, at the beginning we'll you know get the styles uh, done at the end so we do have this one okay sign with google okay please sign with one of the existing accounts so if i click on google then you can see yeah uh, you can see choose an account so just click on that and since i've already logged in yeah it automatically you know redirected me to accounts profile now this is the default case when you are logged in and then you'll be redirected to login redirect url specified in the settings.py right so uh, i have to just change this to something else i mean um, i have to change the uh, login redirect url login redirect url to maybe another url so we'll have maybe we'll um, we haven't we, we we don't have a url yet so what we can possibly do is um we'll create one maybe yeah we'll, we'll go for one so we'll we'll call this profile okay just like that or maybe we'll call this home okay um we'll call this as home and then we'll create a url so before this one we'll just say path you now the home maybe we'll have the home around right there and then we'll you know just render a template so template view we'll use template view and dot s view and then we'll have the name is equal to mm, will be you know not name it's actually template name template name is equal to home.html and the name of this route to be uh, home okay just like that and now we'll be having that okay now we need to import the template view so for that we have we can just say from general views dot generic import template view just like that so we have that home right there now we need to create the templates as well so uh, what, what you can possibly do is that I have set it up a set up you know I have configured a github repository just for this one so you can find this link in the description section so the templates will be there in the templates directory okay so you can just you know you, uh, what you can do is you can just download this code from here you can download zip and then what you can possibly do is um, you can just um, you know uh, copy this templates directory right from here to your project okay to project so uh, there is uh, let me reveal this in finder and just paste that in here so the template is right here okay and now you have to configure the templates okay i mean templates in the sense you have to say django that there is a template directory right in the base there okay so base there templates templates just like that so everything is set okay so you can see there is all those things right there and the count base now all these things are you know i have just overrided the default templates so you can quickly go into login.html and you know just change those those things you know the we are just overriding the default django all um 
you know templates okay so you can see dashboard home.html so this is the um, home.html that we have just set in the URLs okay so it's not just the home.html it's dashboard slash home.html okay just like that now with this being said the template is being set and we have the uh, login redirect URL to be the home exactly now let us you know try to actually um, login with that particular concept if I go into login uh, yeah you can actually see that it redirected me to the you know dashboard which means login redirect URL so you know let me quickly recap this stuff so if I sign out quickly sign out now you know the sign out is again going into the home page so we might need to add a logout redirect URL to be the home not the home maybe we'll stick with si uh, the login okay it's like that and now if I were to go into account slash login you can see the crispy forms yeah it's because I'm using the Django crispy forms to you know style the forms so what I have to do is I have to just say pip install um, you know Django crispy forms just like that and I have to you know set a couple of different configuration now this is actually um, you know out of scope of this course but still to make this thing cleaner we'll have the Django crispy form so I'll quickly go into the documentation and the installation part we have installed crispy forms yeah we need to add that that in the installed app section so right here maybe at the very bottom I'll add that and I'll, I'll align this and then we have a yeah, template pack so in the in the settings.py I have to you know add the crispy template pack okay so at the very bottom again we'll add that now this is ten, this tends to be bootstrap for okay just like that mm -hmm. now with this being set up if I were to go into uh, the yeah, account slash login yeah there's some errors right there so, yeah I have you know I have to restart the server if I go into login yeah now you can see that you have signed out you know now you, we need to just sign in okay so you can see sign in with Google right here okay so all these things you know I have inherited the template I have you know overrided the template you can see in the templates directory if we go into the account the login.html so this is actually where all the things comes into play I mean all those you know if you have not created an account sign up first all these things are coming you know from here okay so this is it okay and um, you know um, what we can possibly do is you know uh, we can pretty much edit this one if possible okay uh, which means um, um, you can see that for example if I were to yeah if I were to change the sign in to log in and if I come back in here refresh you can see it changed to login so you can pretty much you know uh, edit this template these templates all those templates I have in you know overrider here so you can just look into this one and just edit those things okay so this being said uh, let's go into sign with Google let's click on that and what do you know we have successfully signed in as Jasim so it's pretty much working now since we have already created an account before I mean at the time when we uh, you know redirected to accounts profile we have created an account so you can see that our username is there and if I go into actually go into the admin panel so if I log in so if I click AA my password and then if I go into users you can see that yeah we have it's automatically created an account for me and it's now authenticated using social authentication okay so I can just you know select if I sign out and then yeah the sign out still it's not going into the URL that we specified in the settings.py logout redirect URL maybe there'll be some custom you know if I go into the documentation of Django OLOT and if I just say you know the configuration section right here if I search for something like logout yeah so this is I think account logout redirect URL yeah this is the you know thing that comes with the Django all of the package so I'll just copy that and just paste that instead of this one so now this will actually work fine okay so if I were to go into uh, my yeah, account so localhost port 8000 slash accounts slash login you can see um, yeah um, I, I, I can sign in okay if I sign with Google yeah I'm signed in if I sign out yeah I'm gonna 
yeah there is no reverse for login yeah that's because I think the name of the URL maybe it's account login okay I have to check that out you know in the docs itself maybe I'll be it'll be there um, it's not showing correctly but maybe I have to search for uh, you know the the package itself I have to you know dig the package so let's check you know if it's actually account slash login or account login this will be the namespace probably okay uh, so you know that's not the you know entire use case of this <laughs> you know we're just messing up with silly things so let me go into you know login and you can uh, you can see we are automatically logged in I mean we we have already logged in so we don't have to um, log in again so yeah if you go into settings you can see the account connections all these things templates I have overrided and you can see the Google is already almost done okay even though if I sign out maybe it will not work yeah account is not registered yeah I'll, I'll update that in the configuration I mean if I were to go into uh, here in the um, you know in the settings of the repository you can see you'll, you'll see that um, yeah it's actually account account underscore login okay so it's not account login, it's account underscore login. Okay, so now it will work fine. Okay, so the Google part is done. Now we have to do the Facebook, and the other part is the GitHub. Okay, so we'll start with Facebook. The first thing you have to go is you know in the documentation, um, uh, we have to search for Facebook. Okay, the providers in the provider section, just looking for Facebook. Okay. And then yeah we do have all these things we do have social account providers yeah so the first thing we have to do is you know uh, configure Django part okay so we have the Facebook right here so uh, since we already have the social account providers uh, right here we have to add a new key okay so this is Facebook so just copy that just paste that in here okay so just give in a comma paste that and now Facebook is there now you know we don't need a couple of different things we don't need this one we don't need yeah this one as well so all the other things yeah we'll see good default things okay perfect now we have to you know install apps in the install app section we have to you know uncover this stuff here and then we have to go into uh, the Facebook okay I mean uh, we have to go into you know if we come back at the very bottom you can see we can you know just like we did with Google we have to register our application with Facebook so you can just click on this creating an app just here and what do you know we are inside the you know you know if you're if you they might prompt you to log into your Facebook account since I've already logged in it shows me this application now this is the application that I have shown you in the test mode okay so what you have to do is just click on the create app section here and this is actually you know Mm, you can select you know let me you know make this as consumer since it says Facebook login just click on continue app display name it's maybe uh, I'll just say Django OAuth now this is up to you and you know I don't have business manager so just click on create app then you know, for security reason ask for the password I'll quickly you know, type in the password and then what happens is that it'll automatically create an app for me okay so you can see that Django all this being created here perfect okay now what I have to do is I have to click there and create a test app okay so this is the original app I have to create a test app just to test things out in the local host just click on create test app and then you can you know choose a name and just click on create test app again we have to you know since it's uh, an action uh, we have to give the password so yeah now we are in the test one okay you're currently editing a test version okay perfect now what we can do is in the settings if we go into settings basic settings then we'll get uh, two things okay this is the app id which was the client id in google just copy that and just you know paste it somewhere here so instead of this google now I'll uh, you know we'll update this in the um django administration panel and the secret you have to you know again copy that and then just paste for the time being in here and then you have to add something yeah this one app domains so the app domains we have to add localhost okay just like that and then yeah nothing else is important here so yeah I think this is all it so if I save changes and then yeah everything is perfect 
I think this is what we have to do now if I click on advanced let me check if we require anything here um, actually yeah we don't need anything here okay this is it I think okay so this, this is entirely it so we have the all uh, you know local holes right there and yeah nothing else okay so uh, you know the and the Facebook part is over and we have to you know move on to our, um, you know the uh, the documentation Django all out so it's gone I think so I, I'll just screen up I'm not going for a group I, I have to add a new tab so Django all load and then back into here in the provider section we were in the Facebook section right so in here you have to add we have already added this stuff and we have why uh, now we have to add yeah we have to add our application in the Django administration panel so back into here if I were to refresh this yeah I have to read again and then in the social application section I have to add Facebook so Facebook the name is I'll stick with Facebook SSO client ID we have that in in our settings paste that in secret key just paste that in out there and the key we don't require just click on this double click on this one to be selected and choose some sites click on save and now it is ready okay back into the documentation we can see yeah this is all about it okay perfect no we don't need anything okay oh, we don't need anything and if I were to go into my you know login URL since I'm already logged in I'll just sign out okay yeah you can see continue with Facebook right there okay perfect it's working perfectly fine okay so if I click on continue with Facebook now let's see yeah it's actually uh, prompting me to enter the password if I continue then yeah it is requesting access to your name and profile picture and email address yeah yeah we can continue and boom we are logged in successfully signed in as Muhammad Jasim yeah so my name is there uh, you know since I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm for the first time with Facebook it actually created me an account if I can verify this in you know the administration panel itself so if I log in with my super user you can see that a new, new account has been created with my username that we get from the uh, you know Facebook data okay perfect so this is also working now the only thing left behind is the um, you know um, the github so yeah let's go into that let's search the github in the provider section first thing first we have to register app so just click on this url so i'll open this in a new tab and you can see um you know to give an application name so again we'll just say django uh we'll stick with django or home page url this is actually you know if i check here um yeah home page url you can just say HTTP um, call, call local host colon 8000 okay now application description optional authorization callback URL so this just copy this from here okay from here and then just paste that in there and just change the 127 uh, to local host okay register the application and now application created successfully now we have the client ID and client secret okay now just copy in the client ID from here just go into the comment section again we'll just replace this with here and then we need to generate a new client secret just click on that and then you can see this is the client secret just copy that again just paste that in here and we have those in place and now the only thing we have to do is if we go you know if you come here you now we don't need actually the scope because you know all it will stick with the default and now we have to create in the administration panel we have to register application okay so if I were to go into social applications yeah you know, I have to add a new social application the provider is um, yeah we just forgot to add the github in the installed app section so if I go into installed app just uncomment this one now just refresh the page you can see that there's github yep it is now we'll make this Django SSO just just you know just to be sure and then this one the client ID we have copied that just copy this one paste that client secret we have copied copy that paste it over here 
then just double click on this one click on save and now if I were to go into the you know I'll just quickly sign out okay from the account then you can see we have these three things so we have Google we have and Facebook now if we just click on github you can see authorize Django or oh, this is the application that name we have already provided okay you can authorize click on authorize and then boom you're successfully signed to Nasek Jasim. so again a new account is created okay so if we go into you know the um, the social accounts you can see uh, let me log in on the super user you can see there are you know a couple of different accounts you can see okay so you know one provided by github one provided by facebook and one provided by the google okay if i go into users you can see that you know those three accounts okay perfect this is perfect okay and everything is working perfectly fine now if i go into maybe go into settings you can see uh, now this is because we haven't and uh, no, this is the super user so new account is connected so quickly sign out and sign it you know for this time I'll sign with Google okay and you can see I'm successfully signed in so settings you can see this Google right here now you can add a new account you know you can delete remove you can change email all those things you can do everything is working perfectly fine so with this being said you have successfully set that set this up okay so you can just quickly delete all these you know sensitive information from here and then yeah you're pretty much done with the entire step okay now um, the template you can you know just edit as you wish you can see all this you know template i have overrider here you can just go into each of them and change accordingly that's working perfectly fine now yeah we are done with it i think yeah we're done with the entire video now yeah with this being said um, the only thing we are pending you know we're left behind is the python social auth package right so we have said about the python social auth you know python social auth package um, you know there are uh, quite about uh, reasons for using this package instead of Django all auth now the first thing is that if you know Django all auth provides a lot of functionalities okay you can see in the if you go into the overview view you can see a lot of you know um, you know a lot of email address verification you know the instant sign up the uh, you know um, password for get and flow the email address management multiple email address setting primary all those things are additional features now if you want just the authentication flow if you want just the sign with Google and nothing else no other features you know or all the features are you know just the core Django features then you tend to use uh, you know the social auth package because this is very minimalistic which means it only have the social authentication it only have sign with Google Facebook and all those things it doesn't deal with the you know email address stuff multiple email address or all those things it doesn't have okay so if you're very minimalistic if you just need the social sign-in then you might have to stick with Python social auth now you know you can absolutely use Django all auth well you know if you have all if you need all these things and even if you don't need all these things you can pretty much do that okay you know without using you, you you can just you know configure this in a lot of ways you know you can see that in the configuration section okay so with this being said uh, i think we're pretty much complete with the entire workflow i hope you enjoyed this video now if you have any doubts any suggestions please let me know in the comment section below and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon near to it so yeah thank you guys thank you for watching we'll see you in another video